The House of Representatives has summoned the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emifiele, and the Acting Managing Director of the Niger Delta Development Commission, Nelson Bream Brafia, projects, for projects that they abandoned in the Niger Delta region. Now, there should be more summoning across the country, if you ask me, for all of the other abandoned projects. And three former lawmakers, federal lawmakers, I must say, risk being imprisoned following their refusal to honor Supreme Court judgments, ordering them to return some monies to the National Assembly. Now, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cohn. So the House of Representatives has summoned the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Gordon Emifiele, and the acting managing director of the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, Nelson Brian Brafia, and all the directors of the commission. The House Committee on the NDDC, uh, which is probing the federal government projects abandoned in the Niger Delta region, held its inaugural investigative hearing in Abuja on Tuesday. But the officials were absent and there were no representatives. Now, the development forced the lawmakers to threaten the officials with arrest warrants if they failed to answer the summons. Well, I'm being joined in the studio to look at this by Obi Ajewa. She is a, a lawyer. It's good to have you join us, Obi. Nice to be here once again. Uh, it's interesting, the turn of things, the turn of events. A lot of people would say that this is something that should be applauded if we're probing mm -hmm. abandoned projects. But why the Niger Delta? Is that the most abandoned or the most the area with the most abandoned projects niger delta is the cash cow of nigeria mm -hmm. so um, and a lot of billions have been pumped into there so surely it should be the first place that they should probe mm -hmm. and find out why why did x amount of money go out and we don't see the same value on ground i think it's uh, uh, i mean looking at the fact that these people didn't show up None of them showed up, no representatives. Mm. How, how do you even start to deal with the issue if the people who are saddled with the responsibility of bringing certain things to bear in the Niger Delta to help ameliorate the suffering of the people don't feel the need to be accountable? I mean, do we see this actually being taken to a conclusive end? The, the presidency can summon them and they would appear and make them, force them to do something about it. But why can they not appear for the National Assembly, which is a representative of the people, which is a direct link, supposedly, to I the people? I can't hold brief for them, but um, there must be some reason for avoiding the National Assembly. Because we have seen these type of things. may not be the same scenario, but there have been times where the National Assembly has summoned members of, or directors of, he or heads of ministries, departments, and agencies, and they refuse to show up. But when the presidency calls, they answer. Does this show that they have loyalty to the president instead of the people of the country which they claim to serve? No, it is the presidency that has the ability to fire them. What the National Assembly will do is to put pressure on the presidency to fire them. But again, it, it questions their loyalty. Mm. Because I'm guessing... It's not loyalty. A, it's not loyalty. It's accountability. It is... But if it were accountability, they would hurriedly go to the National Assembly. If they all cannot show up, they would send a representative. But it was a no-show. It was a no-show. Isn't that a slap on the face of the average it is, Nigerian? It is a massive slap on the face of the average Nigerian. But God knows maybe it's because of the antecedents of the National Assembly, certain members in the National Assembly. I don't know. But I know that if, if they want to make changes, let's take, for instance, these Amcon loans. The Vice President of Shiban just said they must pay. And there was no negotiation. And they've started paying. So let's say the vice president goes to NDDC and say they must either return this money or face, this, uh, face, face the whole weight of the law on this, then it's different. Again, it still makes, it begs the question, I'm sorry, but I have to keep pushing you on this. It means that we the people have no regards whatsoever in the eyes of these people who say that they're there to work for us. These people that we, yes, the presidency 
somewhat had put their names on a list which the National Assembly given not to, but they're there to serve Nigeria, not the president, not the vice president, not even the office of the presidency. If you forget one thing, we elected Mr. President and Mr. President is doing a bidding. These people are also represent, they are not that arm again to cross check what the executive is doing. And now, maybe, maybe, I cannot hold brief for anybody, but maybe they, they don't feel too comfortable going to the National Assembly, maybe because of some previous antecedents, which I cannot go into, which I'm not even aware of. Do you understand? So that is it. But I feel that if they want something to be done, the National Assembly should write to the presidency that they should look into these abandoned projects and probe and see that it's done. It's really interesting. The APC has the upper hand in the National Assembly. So I'm trying to understand where the disconnect is. And even if it were the, the opposite were the case, if we're saying that accountability only stops at the table of Mr. President, then we probably have a problem, don't we? No. Accountability, first of all, they did not turn up. We don't know if they received the invitation. We don't know if it was convenient for them. Let's say the MD of NDDC is not in Nigeria. He cannot make a show. And let's say the invitation was given to him after he had gone. He cannot even respond to it. But he has directors. He has, I mean, because it wasn't just him that was summoned. The CBN governor was summoned. But that directors in that same department or agency that was summoned. So all of them were all of a sudden. Couldn't, I mean, they could not show up. They had something else that was more important than being accountable to the people of the Niger Delta. No. I'm sorry that you have to answer these questions on their behalf, but it sounds like you're making excuses for them. No, I'm not making excuses for them. You hear people saying when they go to the National Assembly that there are some unsavory things mm -hmm. that happens there. So because of that, they try to avoid going to the National Assembly. So maybe that is it. I don't know. I don't know. But let's move on. Let's talk about the NDDC as, as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, we know that this, this um, commission was put together by the federal government to look oversee certain things in the Niger Delta. And we have so many abandoned projects, whether the ones that are under their purview or not. There's so many abandoned mm -hmm. projects. And like I started on by saying, why does it have to just be projects under the NDDC. What about federal government projects in general, like the East West Road that is, has been abandoned from right from the Obasanjo era? And a lot of people were hoping that when Goodluck Johnson came into power, he was going to be able to see it to a completion because it goes all the way through to Port uh, Port, it goes through Port Harcourt, mm -hmm. it goes all the way down to Bayelsa, mm -hmm. it keeps going. And that road is still not being completed. Let's even look at that. It's a major, major road. It's like a lifeline through, through the southeast into the south-south. We should, we should stop, um, stop putting, putting notions into things that are good intentions. Do you understand? We should not say it's, um, the next thing we hear is because, somebody says because it's the south-south, they want to victimize the south-south. No, it is just governance. So much has been pumped in there, and they must account for it. Likewise, there are other projects that the government is waking up to say, tell us what happened and try and see if you can finish this and all that. But singling out the, 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 the NDDC in particular, NDDC, NDDC is a cash cow. A lot of money was pumped in there. And by now, that whole region would have been a mini London or a mini America. <laughs> And since it's not Shouldn't, that... I mean, that would be decent for every part of the country where money has been pumped into. Yes. Since, since, since that's the case, then, yes, every part of the country, it depends on who is running the engine of it. It depends on who is running the engine of it. Tomorrow, somebody can wake up and say, ah, ah this east-west road, what's happening? Like the way they woke up that said 16 billion had gone in um, power. So maybe someday somebody, maybe somebody is listening to this and maybe after this, the person say, oh yes, what about this east-west rules? What's going on about it? You know, the country is too big and there, and there isn't adequate uh, follow-up. That, that's where my next question is coming from because 
we don't have to wait for the National Assembly to start picking up on these things. These ministries or departments and agencies have mother, you know, the federal ministries, mm. I mean, they're attached to. And so there is a line, This I'm supposing that there is a communication line that also serves as an accountability flow where information comes and goes. Why do we have to wait for a federal call for accountability or people to begin to say, this is what I did? I mean, when we're doing the end of year thing that we're showing our books and presidents are going to commission projects or flag off, who sits in the middle to say, when from the flagging off to the commissioning, we, we are, we're going to put, up, put together an, an annual report or biannual report and send it to the presidency or the National Assembly to keep people up to speed instead of always approving these monies and nothing is done. You see, first of all, there's the jamboree effect of, of giving out contracts. Ah, the contract is worth one billion. You give it out five billion. Four billion goes to London or goes to anywhere it goes to. And then the one billion, because everybody has been satisfied, nobody is there to look after the one billion, to see that that one billion goes to work. And if you are, I'm just talking a scenario, and, and then if you are in that position, you've paid out four billion, you would now say, uh uh, what are they talking about? Let me attend to this one billion for myself. And that's why, and then, so there's no accountability, no follow up, no nothing. We also look at the poor performances of some of these contractors. Let's talk about them. Um, sometimes, I mean, there, was a, uh, there, were, there were some abandoned contracts that the contractors left because they didn't have enough money to complete it or they had to do a lot of kickbacks. Let's also tune into the Ganduje situation. Mm -hmm. Like you said, there's so many people, ha you know, with open arms asking for cuts. So it puts the contractor in a very tight corner. So how do we expect that these projects will come out great and not substandard if we keep having people who are asking for kickbacks? I mean, the whole system is corrupt. Um, that is, you're, you're even saying projects. The project will not take off. Because um, if, 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 if you budgeted five billion for something, and maybe your profit is 500 million, and then somebody says, okay, it's either they say, out of that five billion, you give me one billion. You've shot yourself in the foot. And then if you now budgeted five billion and somebody has put five billion and now wants to take that five billion, you will be saying, ah, ah, monkey they walk, babu they chop. This, well, this person has taken five billion. What am I waiting for? Let me also um, take my own. This is Sadaka. This is um, free for all. That's the scenario. But the law, the law has the law. The, there are provisions in the law that can rein them in if there is the will. Yeah, but I, I'm always very intrigued when we talk about the law. Oh, the law. Yes, we have very interesting laws, mm -hmm. but do they work? Who's going to trigger it? Do we even bring the law into play when issues like this are raised, or are they just policy, for political reasons or to score points? And after a while these things die off and we never hear anything about it. Did anyone in their widest mind believe that AMCOM will really come after those people? Nobody, because those deaths have been around for five years, even some 10 years. And when we talk about it, I have some friends that are AMCOM lawyers. They just go and do their thing and they come back and say, well, and um, the instructions are you must retrieve those money. They must pay back those money. So now that's the new dawn in a debt recovery drive. And I pray that somebody will also come out and um, do that with abandoned projects. Because it's a crime for you to be paid for a job and for you to take the job and sing away and leave the job. And the people's lives will be wasted. But that's because we do not have um, measures that are put in place to punish this. And even if there are, we don't trigger them. So people come and go and say, well, look, if you just get a contract, you know, just you know, do the initial stage mm -hmm. and go away. Yeah. We create that scenario. And we, the people, don't ask enough questions, I'm guessing, because we keep blaming our leaders. But we, the followers, are also bad followers. It's, it, is for, it is for we, the people, to talk. When we talk, 
most times when you get great national prominence, the next thing you take a job and then the next thing you forget your talking and you join the crowd. So it's for us to it's for us to make up our mind that we want a better nation. And a better nation starts from me and you and every other person to say, like um, on one of my forums, they were saying they had um, um, a meeting between lawmakers and constituencies uh, people uh, at um, in, in Lagos about a week ago or a few days ago. And so we were like, you should have informed all of us. We want to go and hear about constituencies. And a friend said, look, at the comp I, I complained about... Um, maybe dead in one place. And um, within two days, they had come and started packing the dead. So it works. But it's for us to find out. It, it, it is not publicized. It's for us to find out where do they have these meetings and let us go and seek. If you come today, talk about the same thing. Come tomorrow, talk about the same thing. Come the last time. After a while, they'll say, ah, let's, let us do something about this. But then again, if the people are not carried along and these town hall meetings are not as publicized as they should be, where the common guy or the man who is more interested in talking about what is happening in his constituency does not get wind of these meetings, it's an exercise in futility. Well, we, we, we made the person promise that when next they're going to have such constituency meetings, they should tell us so that we'll publicize it. I mean, whoever said that town halls were a bad thing, town halls are only, we only hear these town halls when it's time for campaigns. Why don't we have town halls every other time, you know, after every six months or so? Come they and tell have, us what you do. From, my, from what I've discovered in Lagos, there are town hall meetings during the session. There are meetings whereby the, the speaker or the or people, and even I learned about the speaker that he has a, he has a teaching program in Surulere, which is his constituency, whereby um, some people volunteer to teach children. And his own t he, what he teaches is civic responsibility and um, something to do with politics or whatnot. So there, there are, it's for, it's for it to be more publicized and for us to be eager to go. I would like to have know where my um, ch chairman, where my speaker, where my member of my house of rep or senator is coming, so that I can tell them, look, this thing, we need this, we need this, and let me see if it will work. Okay. Well, Obia Jebwa is a lawyer and uh, she has been uh, here in the studio with us analyzing this issue of abandoned protests. Let's hope that this will be a start of something real and not one of those things that we do and then after a while it goes cold. No, this has been, this has been constant. Okay. All right, we'll take a short break and when we come back we'll be talking about sacked lawmakers and not returning funds. We'll be back after the break. <laughs> 